It was a long summer in Montreal, a bummer for fans who rued the absence of playoff hockey. The season couldn't begin early enough, and the team just had to get out of the gates at full speed, leaving the past behind like dust in the wind. And with a slew of fresh faces. Practice my shot a lot, it's something that I've always done. I like to play physical, and it's always how I played, and it's how I've had success. On and off the ice, he's everything we could ask for. Great teammate, unbelievable leader. Management got what it needed. The best beginning in the team's 108-year history. Al Montoya guarded the net and launched 2017 by shutting out the Stanley Cup champion Pittsburgh Penguins. The team carried that momentum for another seven consecutive Ws. And then, the Canadians visited Columbus as the Blue Jackets emptied their armory. The 10-0 loss burst quite the bubble. It became quickly apparent that the lopsided defeat was nothing but a hiccup. The team remained atop the division, and fans' technicolor dreams kept their luster. It wouldn't last. The injury bug swept through Montreal over a cruel 48 hours in December. Brendan Gallagher faced his worst fears, a Weber slapper, and got an unlucky break, his second in two seasons. With the infirmary full, the remaining players' reserves would soon be depleted. There was a lone bright star when Max Pacioretty netted four times in a single game, but the bookends to that feat leaned to the right, where the loss column sits. With the team struggling to rediscover its identity of yesterweeks, General Manager Marc Bergevin relieved Michel Terrien of his duties. The team was simply not playing the right way. The wave of change grew to rogue status. Gone were Andrighetto, Paterin, and the beloved but maligned David Dernay, who had only ever seen bleu, blanc, and rouge. The reinforcements brought a ton, literally and figuratively, of new blood to a team undergoing reinvention. The question, since the return of Claude Julien behind the Canadian's bench, is about time. Will the bench boss have enough of it to prepare his charges to win 16 games in April, May, and June? Having secured another playoff appearance and yet another division title, the momentum is there. As is the new identity, all that remains now is a spot of luck, another miracle or two, and the benediction of our ghosts who have yet to settle into their newest home. With spring hockey secured, Charlie Lindgren gets his second NHL start hoping to help the Canadians win at the Panthers and clinch first place in the division. I see Shazi in the slot, I'm like, I'm just trying to throw him in front of some pump. What, that one? Why you straight on the tape? <laughs> nice shot. Stick down, and I hit it. Oh, I hit the goalie. I hit the goalie? Goalie's pad. Oh. Right under their guys. Oh, okay, okay. I just <laughs> Yeah, I hit the right place. So. I guess so. Hey, let's get a little urgency going here. Paulie took an interception on the offensive blue line and he shot it wide and from the boards he just hopped right on my stick and uh, I was trying to go top corner and go buried it, buried it in between the legs so it was, uh, it was pretty fun. He was really solid today, like, I mean, he didn't, like, uh, 
you could really feel how calm he was. You know, he calmed the things down, and he was playing really well on the back end. We had a tough second period, and he was really like keeping it, keeping us in the game with the five on three kill. I felt, uh, you know, leading up to the game, I was pretty nervous, but uh, once that puck drops, you just go out and play. And um, I felt uh, right from that first shot, I felt like I was into it, and I was seeing the puck well, and uh, yeah, I felt really good. You know, guys are getting the recognition I feel they deserve, whether it be Phil, Pauly. Uh, a lot of guys have uh, stepped up this year and kind of exceeded expectations. The Canadians visit Buffalo for the Sabres' last home game of the season. Get the hard hard. You can beat up those boards, guys. They, they go to that next quick. Keep the game simple here. I'll shoot at the net. There we go. Yeah. Hey, 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 hey. Offside. Offside. Fourth. Fourth, fifth. Guys, you got to come back too, right? <laughs> Don't be afraid to push on that, guys. We have numbers. Instead of giving them the easy pass, Backing off, yeah. If we have numbers. Come on, guys, not get sloppy here. Let's back check. Be smart, make the good smart plays here. Come on, boys, come on, boys. Help them out, they are your boy Polly. That's it, Polly. We can always cycle. They take the pass, head inside the uh, top of the circle. Oh, 89! You got Kinger. You never got shot at that. The Sabres snap Montreal's five game win streak, but it's a loss with few repercussions in the standings. Montreal and its depleted defensive core play host to a desperate Lightning team whose playoff hopes are flickering. La Coupe Monson pour la saison. Les remises aux joueurs ayant cumulé le plus d'étoiles au cours de la saison régulière. The winner is Terry Price. It's just a lot of our team that uh, so many different guys have been nominated for so many different things. Uh, you know, guys are getting the recognition I feel they deserve, whether it be Phil, Pauly. Uh, a lot of guys have uh, stepped up this year and kind of exceeded expectations, and, and that's nice to see guys like that get acknowledgement. When I started at the end of the year, I was like, I didn't think it was a big honor so I'm really happy and I'm excited to see this trophy. Max Pacioretty! Yeah, that's it, 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 that's it. And hopefully we can use that to get some confidence moving forward into the playoffs. Come on boys, let's find it here! Lots of hockey here!
as is tradition out of the team's last home game. A few lucky fans get to meet their heroes and get a game-played signed jersey as thanks for their unwavering support. Une aventure qui commence en début de camp d'entraînement. Tous les joueurs qui vont jouer ensemble, de coopérer, ça se voit dans les visages qui s'amusent, puis c'est c'est belle fun. The Canadians visit Joe Louis Arena, named after the greatest heavyweight puncher of all time. It's the second last hockey game ever in the building, as the Red Wings prepare for a move to Little Caesars Arena, which will have all the fixings you can imagine. Yesterday in the morning, my uh, head coach called me and said, like, you might play tomorrow. I was, like, shocked. I was like, are you kidding me? Are you joking right now? <laughs> But he said no. It was awesome, I was enjoying it a lot. Maybe I didn't play the way I wanted to, but that yeah, was great. As generations change, the Canadians bid adieu to a hockey landmark with a win. Some teams raise banners for division titles. Others throw a parade when they reach the semis. But if you play for the Montreal Canadiens, only one thing truly matters. Inscribing your name on Lord Stanley's Cup. We all dreamed at a certain moment, when we started playing hockey, at the age of 5-6 years, to be part of the team that won the Cup Stanley, to count the goal that gagner la Coupe Stanley. Depuis que t'es ticu, tu, tu regardes jouer le Canadien de Montréal, tu regardes les célébrations des Coupes Stanley, puis quand toi, tu es là, tu l'as dans tes bras, c'est absolument remarquable. Quand j'ai pris la Coupe, j'ai pensé à mon enfance, à mes parents. J'ai pensé aux sacrifices qu'ils ont fait, euh, j'ai pensé aux sacrifices que moi, j'ai fait. Une aventure qui commence en début de camp d'entraînement. Il y avait une attitude de gagner la Coupe Stanley à l'intérieur du vestiaire, jour après jour après jour. Alors, ça s'est tranquillement grossi pour devenir, à un certain moment, on y croyait. Team spirit uh, was a big part of the reason we won the cup. Uh, you can say we were like a family. Il n'y avait aucune friction dans l'équipe. On trouvait euh, toujours le moyen de se regrouper. On riait ensemble beaucoup. On avait un bon esprit d'équipe, un esprit de famille. On avait euh, une force de caractère incroyable. Puis on voulait gagner à chaque match. Puis je me souviens, on perdait un match. Là. On entendait voler une mouche dans l'avion puis dans le vestiaire. Je pense que c'était la force de notre équipe. Beaucoup de leadership, des gars qui n'acceptaient pas d'abandonner facilement. Puis c'est pour ça, je pense, qu'on a réussi à remporter cette série-là. Il faut avoir peur de perdre. Je pense qu'en 77, on s'est fait battre contre Toronto. On ne les avait pas pris au sérieux. Alors, je crois qu'après ça, j'ai eu tout le temps la peur de perdre. D'avoir la mentalité d'être en mesure de rebondir après une défaite difficile, que ce soit en prolongation, que ce soit un match serré, trouver une manière de gagner. Alors, le leadership, pour moi, joue un rôle excessivement important dans les succès. Mais c'est sûr que le gardien de but a peut-être le côté plus visible, plus, plus de visibilité par rapport au rôle qu'il peut jouer. 
C'est important d'avoir tous les joueurs qui vont jouer ensemble, de coopérer. Ça se voit dans les visages qui s'amusent, puis c'est bien le fun. Ça prend des arrêts clés de ton gardien de but. Ça prend de la discipline. Euh, ça prend de la bonne préparation. Ça prend de la profondeur. Même si on n'avait pas la meilleure équipe, je pense pas que j'ai eu une année pour, que je n'avais pas le sentiment qu'on avait une chance de gagner. J'essayais jamais de voir qu'est-ce que ça prenait pour me rendre au bout, mais c'était de franchir une étape à la fois. J'ai l'impression que quand on essaie de gagner la Coupe Stanley avant d'avoir gagné la première partie, ça devient tellement gros qu'on s'étouffe à l'intérieur de ça. Everything I've heard from the guys is an uh, unbelievable experience. L'atmosphère au centre belle pour les séries, c'est un niveau complètement différent. You never really played in the playoffs, so you played in Montreal. The secret to winning a Stanley Cup is so commonly known, it's become a cliché. Take it one game, one period, one shift at a time. It's been 24 years since anyone's done that in Montreal. Their main goal isn't to make the playoffs, it's to you know, go as far as they can in the playoffs. So last year it was definitely uh, heartbreaking to know that this group uh, would miss the playoffs because we feel every time we get a chance to go in the playoffs that we'd have a chance of doing something special and this year's no different. Been a part of uh, teams that have won championships before, and, and uh, it just—it's just—it's uh, all about momentum. You give yourself an opportunity by first off getting to the playoffs, and then just playing well. It's kind of a, a snowball effect. There's a big group of us that have been there, and, and you know, Kingers won a few. Montreal's been to the conference finals a lot lately, and uh, yeah, I think as a team, as a unit, I think we're all going to help each other out with our experiences and you know, uh, learn from one another. Everybody's got that hunger, desire. As a hockey player, that's that's the end goal. So their desire is there, their hunger is there to, to bring their best game for us and uh, hopefully get the results we're looking for. A lot of uh, hard-fought battles and uh, experiences that hopefully uh, we can draw upon and, uh, and use those in situations that you're going to have to go through. There's obviously ups and downs through the playoffs, and um, you've got to try and stay uh, stay even no matter what. Pour aller jusqu'au bout dans les playoffs, euh, faut que ton équipe joue le meilleur hockey de la saison. C'est totalement différent de la saison régulière. Tous les matchs ont tellement un gros impact sur donc, le résultat final. The playoffs start, it's all about winning. Like everything, like you really are putting everything out there. First round, really, if you look at the playoffs, is really intense because everybody's uh, probably the most healthy. They are, they're going to be in the, in the whole playoffs. So you really have to prepare to be at the high level of your hockey, uh, mentally and physically. You got to be prepared to be on a roller coaster ride. You know, emotions are up and down through series. Uh, you're going to be down in games, and you, you can't give up in those opportunities. You know, you got to keep, uh, keep battling, keep working hard. And you got to expect being hurt and tired. I mean, every team's gone through a long season, and every team's experiencing it, and I think it's you know, sticking together, pushing each other to, to our limits, competing for one another, and you know, just, you know, finding that extra gear. Everybody's going to be tired. Everybody's going to be a little bit banged up. And just trying to, uh, just trying to find a way to, to mentally overcome that is, uh, is the biggest hurdle. It's really a mindset. It's a mindset that you're going to be, you know, committed to your teammates to do whatever it takes to win. And, and if you have everyone on board and the type of depth that I feel like we have, if uh, guys can step in and, and make a difference when they're needed to, uh, that mindset is huge, and it goes a long way. It might not pay off game one, game two, but I think in the long run of things, um, those are the teams that win. Generally in playoffs, you know, uh, everything kind of gets less and less. You know, it's sort of like you use the 82 games to prepare and get all the details into the game, all the teaching, all the preparation. But when it comes to the playoffs, it's less is more. You know, the it's very uh, focused on just getting ready to play. You play the same opponent. You put a lot of your focus on playing the game, not so much uh, with the other preparation. That's all done prior to playoffs. When we commence the series and the eliminatoires, because everyone wants to be ready individually. I think it's important for us, as a coach, to be prepared for our club. The whole focus really is the game one, first round, keep it very detailed, very short, and just take it one game at a time. Je pense que le meilleur conseil que, que tu donnes à un joueur, parce qu'ils sont déjà très motivés, c'est la façon qu'ils doivent gérer soi-même, côté repos, côté nutrition, faire tout ce qu'on peut euh, pour être prêt à jouer tous les matchs. It's going to be a lot of fun. I know that it's always the best time of year to play. When you're uh, competing for something you've worked for your whole life, it's, uh, it gets to another level. There's a lot more enthusiasm. It's going to be crazy. Um, you know, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, the hockey is going to be uh, you know, the most intense hockey of my life and 
Um, you know, to, to be in the Bell Center with the fans' energy, it's something that you know I can't wait for. Ça commence une game à la fois, mais je veux savoir, je veux voir le feeling, là, la, la crowd, puis la maison, puis l'émotion qui va être dans le top, puis euh, de vivre ça en gang, toute l'équipe qu'on a, la chimie est tellement bonne que ça va être euh, quelque chose d'assez unique là. L'atmosphère au Centre Bell pour les séries, c'est un niveau complètement différent. Puis euh, on a vu dans le passé euh, l'atmosphère à Montréal, la ville, euh, comment les, les personnes euh, sont fébriles pour, euh, pour les séries de droit. Alors euh, je suis pas inquiet pour ça. Puis les Rangers encore de New York, c'est la même chose, mais c'est pas Montréal. Everything I've heard from the guys is an uh, unbelievable experience. It's just like uh, something you've never experienced before, and uh, I'm really looking forward to game one. You feel the buzz in the city. I think, guys, uh, whether you've played or not, you kind of understand that there's nothing like Montreal in the playoffs. The buzz in the city, the vibes from from the fans, every everywhere we go is uh, positive. Um, so whether you played off, played in the playoffs or not, it doesn't really matter because you never really played in the playoffs. So you played in Montreal, and uh, it's a whole other ball game. And, there's no place like it in the spring, and uh, I'm just so excited to be back a part of it. One step closer to our goal, and uh, we're looking forward to it. I don't want to be able to even after the Coupe Stanley, I'm going to talk about the first series against the Rangers. After that, it's the end of the Looking back on the year that was, moments jump out at us. End-to-end -end magic. Teams that couldn't beat the spread. Veterans who seem to have drunk from the fountain of youth. And kids who look like they've been around forever. And when we look forward to the coming weeks, we may secretly hope that this is the team to deliver number 25, if the ghost will allow it. And it is indeed meant to be. For once, it will be via a most unusual route, a pilgrimage they must figure out for themselves, one small gesture at a time. Why not them? This show is brought to you in collaboration with Lay's Potato Chips, proud fan of the Montreal Canadiens.